uh, in its knowledge, right? Well, it's, so, it's, it, divides, that, it divides everything into tokens, and those tokens are more than one letter. And so it, 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 it actually, weirdly, it's, it's myopic with respect right. to single letters. Right, I see. So it's got a resolution problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, you can get around with this with like, like weird tricks, like if you ask, ask it to write a computer program to count the number of letters in a word, it can create that computer program, run it, and then, and then get the number of letters correct. Hmm. Right, um, right. Anyway, but I, I, so back to consciousness. So on, on, on the question of consciousness, I always think, like, where along the lines, like, is, is everything conscious or is nothing conscious, mm -hmm. potentially? Um, and I, I think you want to just, when you're trying to understand something, um, consider the various possible answers and think that there's a probability associated with each one of these mm -hmm. answers as opposed to a certainty. Uh, now, if, if physics is correct, the universe started off um, with consisting almost entirely of, of hydrogen, mm -hmm. a little bit of helium and mm -hmm. uh, some lithium, and the, that coalesced into stars that exploded. Um, you know, when it coalesced into stars, you had the formation of heavier elements, and, and then uh, those stars got, got scattered and, and then reformed uh, and, and made new stars. Um, and uh, so we eventually got uh, elements that are higher in the periodic table besides mm -hmm. the, the very basic ones. Mm -hmm. um, it's the physics equivalent of Jacob's Ladder, I think. Yeah, so this is, this is what physics predicts. Mm -hmm. This strange spiral upward towards some, some what? Towards consciousness? Well, well yeah. So, um, but the point is that the universe, at least according to physics, started out essentially as hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And given enough time, you had more um, you know, complex, uh, or you had heavier elements and more complex molecules. And, and then 13.8 billion years later, at least on this planet, we have what we call consciousness in the form, you know. Yeah. But, but, but that means consciousness had to arise. It's implicit, at least. From hydrogen. Yeah. Well, um, see. <laughs> So if you just leave hydrogen out in the sun long enough, See, it this, starts talking well, to itself. This is, I think what you're, I, I, I've seen your comments on this before. I think you're pointing to the same sort of thing that my friend Jonathan Pajot has been trying to elucidate, which is that there's, a, there's an implicit structure of possibility. He associates this with the concept of heaven. Like there's an implicit structure of possibility that material forms are trying to flesh out. And so in some sense, the possibility of consciousness is inherent in the hydrogen atoms, right? Obviously, because it well, emerged. Yeah. So, so it's it's it's, it's a tautology in yeah. some ways. But so maybe everything's conscious in some way. Maybe well, it's just, see, maybe it's just degrees of consciousness or concentrations of consciousness. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that's associated with the notion, the Christian notion, that the word is primary. You know, because in 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 mythological representations, you have three fundamental elements. You have something like order, which you could think about as society, but it's, an, it's, the, it's the a priori axiomatic interpretive structure. You have that. Then you have chaotic potential. That's the tohu vabohu that exists at the beginning of time. And so the way God is represented in the story of Genesis is that, so God is the a priori interpretive process that gives rise to order as a consequence of manipulating potential. And the intermediary factor is the word. That's the Christian conception. And the word is something like, it's something like, well, language, but it's also something like the sacrificial gesture that's, that's necessary for learning to take place. So you could imagine this. When you learn something, it's not only that you add to a storehouse that you have, it's that something that you already know has to undergo a death and a transformation. You know, most real learning is painful. You think? Uh, it, yeah, I mean. Well, think about painful. well, well, the deeper the axiom that's shifting when you learn, the more chaos is associated with it. That can be exciting, but it can also be destabilizing. That existential crisis that you had had great potential, right? Sure. Because you resolved it, but that didn't mean it was without its pain. Sure. Right? So, if you imagine a hierarchy of axioms, right, and so. The lower down the axiom hierarchy you go, 